Hey everybody, I'm still out here in Slovenia having just finished, just wrapped on what's been a brilliant shoot this week, but anyway, more on that later. Uh, now it's time to do the preview to the British Grand Prix, a Silverstone, an amazing circuit, a circuit that's going to give a whole new set of challenges to the teams and drivers, very different to the first two tracks that we visited this year in 2020. And so before I left, before I came out here and was back in the UK, I got into the simulator as always, did some laps, recorded some of the most interesting corners and moments around that lap that I thought might be interesting to you. I'm going to pick those out, sit down now and try and do some voiceover to talk your way, talk our way through that lap. Picking out the things that are happening with the car, the things that are ha happening from a driver perspective. How do we as Formula One teams get the best out of these cars all the way around the lap. Um, very different challenge, like I say. This is a circuit that's pretty high downforce, incredibly high speed, got some amazing sequences of corners that really test the car and the tyres. Uh, Pirelli bringing the hardest three compounds of their range to the first Grand Prix, but then a week later, for the 70th anniversary Grand Prix, we go one step softer in the range. So that's another interesting dynamic that the teams will have to work out, deal with and prepare for as we go through the practice sessions, keeping things interesting, hopefully from one week to the next. Um, the reason this is such a stressful race on tyres is Firstly, the speed and the aero loading that's pushing the cars down into the tarmac, but also the fact that the, the corners are so long and uh, high speed, high duration corners with a really abrasive surface. Uh, a track that's been relayed a couple of times over the past few years to try and alleviate some of the bumps, but actually it's still abrasive. And that means that as you go through, particularly some of the long duration corners, you really start to build up temperature particularly in the rear tyres towards the end of the lap, keeping them alive before you get to the last part and back onto the start finish straight is one of the challenges that you have to overcome if you want to, particularly in qualifying, keep the lap time up for, for, the, for the entire duration of a lap. So I'm gonna now try and record some VO over the top of the clips that I've recorded, try and see if we can work out how to get a great lap around the British Grand Prix circuit of Silverstone. So let's start it off. Uh, off we go then, coming out of the final corner and onto uh, what is the start finish straight. Particularly crucial in qualifying, of course, because you set yourself up for an incredibly fast section of this circuit. Flat out down past the wing building on the right hand side. Eighth gear at this point, maximum speed, moving all the way over to the left hand side. And as a driver, you're not even jumping on the brakes. This is flat all the way through here, trying to pick out your turning point really difficult because you have to get it centimetre perfect to be able to turn it in here, clip that apex curb really accurately. The last thing you want to do is run out too far wide onto the exit curb here because immediately, still flat on the throttle, we're turning in left through this second corner here of farm. Um, hugging the apex curb as we come around here, still flat on the throttle, here is the first point we lift jump on the brakes. The, the weight transfers to the front axle, make sure you don't lock them up, slowing right down third gear and turning into what will be the loop here, a really slow section. Now this is a part of the racetrack the car's just simply not set up for. It hates it. We're setting the cars up for all the high speed stuff and this is one of those really difficult, unnecessary or unwanted bits from an engineering point of view. Important to straighten the car up as early as possible to get back on the power because as we clip through there, clipping that curl, we're back into a DRS zone and flat out all the way down this straight towards Brooklands at the end. Again, maximum speed, aero loading up the car. We can brake really quite late into this one because we go into another pretty frustratingly slowish or medium speed section of corners through here. So late on the brakes, late on the turn in, trying to find a, a late apex here getting the car turned in, probably fourth gear, maybe clicking it down to third gear as we come through the right-hander of Luffield, frustratingly slow. Got to be really patient on the throttle here. You want to get on the throttle early because you're getting back onto what is the old start finish straight, but you have to be really patient. Don't want to light up those rear tires because if it's more and more temperature in them, and that's the very last thing you want to do here. The old pit lane and pit buildings on the right hand side there, flat out all the way down here towards Cops Corner, 
which is either flat in most cars, I should imagine now, possibly just a tiny little lift, but again, really difficult to pick out your turning point and your apex point as a driver at the speed you're going at, with things rushing past you, but it's really important to get it right. Clip the apex then, allow it to run to the left, but then immediately start to swing back over towards the right-hand side, all the way flat, hard on the throttle. You're pushing that throttle as hard as you can. Through these corners here, Maggots and Beckets, an amazing complex of corners. You want a really stiff roll stiffness within the car because the last thing you want is weight being transferred around. You don't want the car wallowing, wallowing around like your road car would. Really quite tricky to pick out your apex curb at this speed and from that distance. So you use a reference point you found earlier, you flick it in flat out on the throttle. Clipping the curb there really got to be so accurate because you get it wrong and you are off over the curbs and off into the boonies. Flat through there, then just we start to lift, click it down a gear and then smashing the throttle back down again, flat out. Accuracy is everything through here. The car, you're reliant on that stiffness to keep the car as stable as we can before we come back into a DRS zone, flat out on the throttle, all the way down the hangar straight, down towards uh, Stowe Corner. Really fast entry, normally packed grandstands ahead of you, late on the brakes again, chuck it down a couple of gears, but then immediately back on the throttle again, hoping that the aero of your car will keep you stuck to the tarmac Get the throttle on early, trying to straighten it up as we come to the final part of this lap. A lot of lap time can be won or lost through here because this is really about managing tyres. Not the fastest part of the circuit, you're closing down from massive speed here, late on the brakes, easy to lock the tyres, and probably just down to third, maybe even second gear through this frustratingly slow section here. In we go clipping through those corners there, trying to get the car straightened up again over that apex curb and back hard on the throttle again to start another lap. What a great circuit this one is. Unbelievable, it's a great circuit to drive even just on the simulator. We know the F1 drivers love it. From an engineering point of view, it's a whole new set of challenges as I said, but actually it's a really interesting one from an engineering perspective because you have a completely different challenge in terms of managing the car at high speed, managing that roll stiffness that you want to keep the aero platform as stable and as level as possible. It's not really about traction or braking events around this circuit like some of the others are. This one's all about how much lateral grip you can manage, how laterally sensitive your car is. When we talk about longitudinal or, or latitudinal limited circuits, this one is latitudinally limited. It's about how long your car can hang on through the high G corners without breaking grip and spitting you off. If you can manage to get a car set up to do that, 
you will deliver a fast lap time. Amazing circuit, amazing event. Same, we're not going to have fans there this weekend, but I still am really looking forward to it. I'll actually be commentating on the second of the two Silverstone races for the BBC alongside Jolie and Palmer. You can catch that on uh, Radio 5 Live or their digital channels. I will, of course, let you know. I hope you have a fantastic weekend, guys. I cannot wait for it. Really looking forward to this one. I'll see you soon.